I invented a kick. I'm 90% certain I invented this kick. I'm pretty sure no one's ever done it before me. I think it's a thing that will land 100% of the time, every single time. Back in the day, I made a video about how hook kicks were nobody's favorite kick. Dirty little secret is, they're actually my favorite kick. I think hook kicks are extremely sneaky, they can be extremely powerful, and they make your opponent very weary about fighting you. So in this video, we're gonna talk exclusively about how to land the rear leg hook kick. If you're looking for a tutorial, this ain't it. Click the video right here to watch that. This is about strategy, not tutorial. So make sure you're subscribed and you have notifications turned on, and let's get started. So the first way to land the rear leg hook kick is just to throw the rear leg hook kick, which sounds really stupid. But if you and I are here and we're fighting, and I have no idea what you're capable of, you have no idea what I'm capable of, there's a very high chance that I can throw this and land it. If I just am confident enough with it and snappy enough with it, I might be able to land a very good hook kick. But if you know something about the human body, you understand how to read when someone can throw something at you, there's a chance this hook kick might land on your arm, I might land here, and then you throw your hook, your uppercut, whatever, and then I die. So that's a possibility. So instead of us being here, let's say you're slightly farther back, and I time my hook kick to where as you rush to hit me, I throw my hook kick. Again, I wait for that lead leg to step in, and as soon as it lands, there's my hook kick. Because you can't do two things at once, right? right. You can't defend yourself as you come into attack. Step towards me. Again. One more. I totally hear you though. You didn't watch this video, so that the advice you could be given is just throw the hook kick to land your hook kick. I'm just saying, sometimes that's all it takes. But if it takes more than that, let's take a look at this combination. When you wanna land a rear leg hook kick, a spinning back kick, a spinning back fist, what you have to do is set it up. And what a coach means when they tell you to set it up is make your opponent worry about something else so they don't see it coming, right? It's a, it's a sleight of hand. If you're looking over here, you're not gonna pay attention to what's happening over here, right? And that's true of everything. That's true of your straight punches. That's true of your knees, but it's especially true of the funky shit like a hook kick. So. What we're gonna talk about now is setting up our hook kicks using a very common kickboxing flow. That flow being the hook to low kick, followed up with a jab cross, boom, boom. Why do I like this build? Because it gets you thinking about a lot of stuff, right? Let's say I land this here, boom, his hand comes up. Boom, his attention is down low. I sneak my hand down the guard, look, his hands are up there. When I'm there, I take a cheater step out to the side, bring my rear leg up and sneak in that hook kick. With this combination, it doesn't matter if it lands flush, you can throw it into their body, you can throw it into their head, or if they're guarding, you can throw it into their arm because it's very disheartening, right? Mm -hmm. And it makes you get heavy here, right? Because it makes you think that I'm dangerous at every single angle, which is what you want. That's what I like about the hook kick. You don't have to throw it often, but if I teach you that my leg can come across and smack you from here, that means anytime my legs come up, mm -hmm. you're defensive everywhere. And when you're defensive everywhere, you're defensive nowhere. So the second way to land the hook kick, set it up nice and easy. Hook low, boom, follow up one, two, boom, boom, step out to 45, throw your rear hook, boom, and then walk off the swagger. So like I said, everything we're doing is gonna be built off lead hook, rear low kick, two hands. Using that, we're gonna now learn to throw the spinning hook kick. Let's say I come here and I go hook low, boom, one, two. And Tommy's one of those guys I talked about who likes to counter after I'm done. But instead of throwing his cross, he throws the hook. Natural response is to roll, right? We're taught on day two of our striking training to roll a hook, right? And yes, sometimes a Muay Thai coach will tell you you never roll a hook because you might get knee. I personally have never seen anyone roll right into a knee. It's just not a thing that normally happens, unless you do this. If you yeah. hang out down here, then yeah, you're asking for a knee. But typically, that hook comes in, boom. This is a complete side tangent, but you do have to practice rolling hooks, right? If I never practice it and I expect to be able to do it, I'm just gonna roll into it, right? So. If you practice getting in range and sliding out of the way, give me the other side, then yeah, you'll be able to move all slickly. But if you never do, and you just think you can, ow. let's say I'm someone who practices my rolls. I come in hook low, boom, one, two, and I roll. Instead of just stepping to the side, what I'm gonna do is let my lead leg follow around, turn me over, spot my target, which is important, and now I'm gonna throw my hook kick. If you watch my videos, which you should, you know that I don't believe in spinning kicks. I believe in kicks that happen after you spun. So I'm not gonna come here, don't throw anything at, 
I'm not gonna come here and go while I'm moving, right? Because then I'm just hoping my kick lands. What I'm doing is spinning myself around and then throwing my kick, which to you looks like I'm spinning. Mm -hmm. To me, it's just turning around. So the whole flow is gonna be here. Hook low, boom, one, two, up, up. Roll, step, spin, boom, there's my hook kick. Now, it's important to know how your feet move when you're rolling. The instinct is to just roll and step across like this, but that sets me off balance. And if he plans on following up after his hook, I'm off balance here, he might be following up with a kick, might be following up with a grab, whatever, right? So it's not a lead foot step across initially. What I'm doing is standard roll step, then my lead foot steps across, and I turn into my hook kick. Step, across, hook kick. Now I can hear it already. He's not gonna let you spin like that. That's why I use my left hook again. I come here, hook low, bop, boom, one, two, bop, bop, throw a fake hook as he throws his, one, boom. You knew I was gonna do that, and still it's awkward, right? Yep. Even when you know it's not gonna hit, it's awkward. So, you can add kind of just a fake slap shot as you roll underneath. One more time, just for funsies. Hook low, boom, boom jab cross, boom, boom, roll, boom, boom. I invented a kick. I'm 90% certain I invented this kick. I'm pretty sure no one's ever done it before me. We all know what the switch roundhouse kick is, right? It's you taking the lead leg, putting it behind, and throwing the roundhouse kick, right? We also know what the hook kick is. It's what we're doing today. It's me taking this leg and throwing a reverse roundhouse kick to hit him from the opposite side. In fact, in Japanese, the term for hook kick is ura mawashigeri, which literally means backwards roundhouse kick. The two kicks are the exact same. So, me, the scientist, I thought, why can't I do a switch hook kick? Yeah? Just like earlier, I'm gonna go here and do a switch step. But now, instead of bringing the leg straight up, like I do with the roundhouse kick, I'm gonna bring it across and then back like a hook kick. I think it's a thing that will land 100% of the time every single time. But it's a little bit slower than the switch roundhouse because with the switch roundhouse, it's ideally two steps, right? It's switch one, kick two. With the switch hook, it's more like switch one, lift two, kick three. So there's a little bit of a time discrepancy here, but as with everything, if you learn to set it up, you'll be able to land it. So now, let's talk about how we can land the switch hook kick. Once again, building off of our flow. I'm gonna come here and go hook low, bop, boom, follow up with a jab cross. Now, Tommy's gonna throw his hook, and instead of rolling it, I'm gonna block it. So I go hook low, bop, boom, jab cross. He throws his hook at me, boom. I'm gonna use this as a setup for me to come back with a counter cross. Boom, now he's dealing with this cross. If it lands, if it doesn't land, he's worrying about it. As I bring the hand back, I'm gonna switch my feet and throw the switch hook kick. Boom, right there. Again, with a little flow. I come in here, hook low, boom, jab cross, lock, cross, boom, switch, boom, hook kick. I don't even know what to do <laughs> about it. Now if I rush it, if I try to make it one, two, three, four, you're gonna block it naturally because you're shelling up, right? So I have to break up the timing. So I'm gonna come in here, one, two, pause, one, two, bop, bop, block, boom, big one, boom, switch, boom, hook kick. Just roughing the timing makes it more likely to land. As you learn your combinations, you want it to go one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth, right? And that's good for learning it, not good for applying it. Uh, you don't want me to just to jam up. Exactly. You don't want him to just be shelled up because then I wouldn't land the roundhouse or the hook kick because he'd be reacting just instinctively, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to go for the switch hook right away. I'm going to go hook low, one, two, block, cross, switch roundhouse. Boom, good. I'm going to let him get used to that switch roundhouse so that when I change it, he's not expecting it. So again, the whole flow, hook low, boom, boom one, two, boom, boom, block, boom, here it comes. Boom. And uh, walk off with swagger again. You wanna try it? Yes. Okay. So the flow, hook low, hook low, boom, jab cross, block, cross, boom, switch your feet in place, rear leg hook kick. Boom, oh yeah. That was a lead leg hook kick. He invented a new thing, yes! <laughs> the lead leg hook kick is viable. It's actually my preferred way of throwing the hook kick. I prefer coming in here and boom, right? But if I've already taught him this, means that this leg is gonna come in as a roundhouse, and I go for the hook kick, you're already proposed, you're already predisposed to blocking it, right? So I'm not saying you can't, I just think you're more likely to land the rear leg hook kick off of the switch. So there we have it. There were four, five, a couple different ways to land the rear leg hook kick. Most of that also applies to the lead leg hook kick, most of it applies to the spinning hook kick. It really applies to any technique you want. Anything you want to land, 
you have to learn, you have to teach your opponent to learn that you're not going to throw that. If they think you're going to do anything else but the thing you want to do, you're going to be able to do the thing you want. That was clear, right? That makes sense? That's wise. Cut it. Big. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make, you guys, is that ultimately you can throw whatever you want. And if you have zero concern of it landing, then all more power to you. But if you want to land your crazy hook kicks, your back fists, your back flip kicks, you have to learn to make your opponent worry about something else. But once they know that you're capable of throwing strikes from any angle, you're going to become that much more dangerous. However, I do have to say, don't become so concerned with landing something crazy like a hook kick that you ignore the fundamentals like a straight punch or a roundhouse kick or a front kick. The fundamentals are the fundamentals. These are the fundamentals. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you feel like you learned something, and if you're looking for a channel that combines the practicality of combat sports with the reality of self-defense and the fun of traditional martial arts, then please be sure to subscribe, tap the notification bell, like, share, and leave a comment. And you guys asked for it, so Tommy's back. Tommy, how can I show you some sport? I'm building an indie game, and you can find it at spiritofglace.com. It's right here in flashy text. I've been getting updates about this game for about a year now. It looks awesome. If you guys want to play it or just show support to my friend, then please go visit his site, sign up for his Patreon, show him some love. And while you're spending some money, head on over to combatsd.square.site and pick up one of the official Combat Self-Defense t-shirts if you want to show support to me. I want to thank you guys for all the hard work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done. And I'll see you again next time. Shazam!